Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and what the f Apparently I was wrong. So the video that I made uh, a while ago, just, you know, disregard it completely. Let, Let it go. go. Let it go. So the devs of KSP or Kerbal Space Program have thought this through. I was just an idiot and didn't see it. Apparently there is this thing on the specs of probe cores that you have to read in fine print where it tells you that it can single hop. In other words, you can use it to control something that's in, in the immediate vicinity or within reach of your relay dish. Or there's something called multi-hop, which allows your signal to ping around different satellites in order to control something that's far away. So interestingly enough, the Koopa module doesn't have a probe control point option, which I thought some people in the comments said it did. However, the command pod, the Mark 1-3 command pod, does have a probe control point option. Minimum of pilots on vessel, and you need to have two of them, but it's single hop only, which means it can only control within its vicinity. It can't bounce the signal around the planet or moon. The Mark II lander can can also do probe control point. Needs two pilots, but it can do a single hop only. Yeah, the, 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 the cupola module does not do that, nor does the Mark III command or cockpit. Mark II inline cockpit, none of these. The only probe cores that do it, of course, are the remote guidance unit, RC001S. That, of course, is a single hop only. So if you want to do multi-hops, this one, the rc l one remote guidance unit, probe control point, minimum pilots on vessel needs to be one, but it can do a multi-hop capable. It is the only multi-hop capable part in Kerbal Space Program. So if you want a really working network, make sure your colony or ship has one of these bad boys. As long as I've been playing this game, I was not aware of this. But then again, this is the first time I've ever really dealt with it. You see, this is the reason why you guys are so awesome, is because you bring these things up. I always read the comments, even though I might not be able to respond to them right away, usually because after I'm done downloading or uploading a video, I've got a shit ton of other things, things to, do. to do. But when I sit there and read the comments, I learn a lot, and I get a Lot of, a lot of ideas for more videos. If it wasn't for you guys, none of this would be possible. So now that we know that this multi-hop thing in the jiggy Cory whatever thing exists, now we can really start to dive in here, make this shit work. So right now what I did was I built a kind of temporary over-exaggerated communications dish in order to sort of like celebrate this newfound thing, well newfound thing for me about KSP. Interesting how you can play this game for over a decade and still learn something new. I await the day of KSP2 with bated breath, but at the same time, I'm horrified by just how many millions and millions of things I'll have to learn. <laughs> it's gonna be complicated. So back to the colony. The colony is actually far from complete. It's up and running now compared to the camp the colony camp that we had before when we landed on the planet for the first time. So the thing I wanted to do now was straighten out the colony a little bit. Redesign a couple of the buildings because some of them were just falling apart. I don't know if that's KSP being KSP or whatever the case is, but it's happening, so I need to find a way to fix it. It goes without saying that the residential unit was, well, its foundation looked a little meh. <laughs> So I redesigned a new residential unit, gave it more connecting points all over the place. Plenty of auto strutting going on and rigid attachment going on. So I think it's going to last for a good long time. Plus it's got neat little things now where the Kerbals can actually leave and go in from that area, which can be nice. Did some redesigning on the command structure as well as the solar panels. I noticed that they're drooping and breaking the solar panels. So I put little stabilizers at the end since I know it's going to droop eventually. The stabilizers keep it from completely going smushing into the ground and breaking the solar panels. I recently made a new design which keeps them from drooping completely. Drooping. Completely. But I'll iterate that later. It's fine the way it is. Same thing with the factories and some other stuff. Took out some more parts. Lowered part count. So for the next six to seven hours I just built new parts on the colony. Put everything ever everything everything together and while I was doing it I even redesigned the lifter mover to kind of become one vehicle. It is no longer a spider class but a scorpion class. Pretty big big vehicle but some of these things that it's got to move around are pretty heavy even on Duna. It's really cool how multiple vehicles in the beginning started coming together and merging together and now all of them are literally all the designs are together into one design. Innovation. It's pretty cool. So now that the colony 
colony is more or less complete-ish. We even added a medical facility. There's a couple other facilities that I built, but we're not gonna put those in there just right now. I think what I'll do is if I make different colonies, different colonies will be serving for different purposes. Like one that's meant for science will be its own colony, but it's only for science, it doesn't produce anything, or vice versa. Maybe we'll just make a purely mining colony. So the first colony will be, you know, something that can jack of all trades, and then we'll start building colonies that specialize in different areas that'd be cool so for now what I wanted to do is I wanted to start building up on the space station it's not gonna be the go-to super duper space station it's just gonna be a collection of little modules for now kind of like what the Russian mirror was back in the day before the ISS was a thing so every single module is gonna have its own power supply and fuel and everything but they're all gonna be connected together just to have something up there some Kerbal presence in orbit and then later on we'll have missions that will go and uh, collect some of the debris from the old colony ship that's still up there. Maybe even revive that poor rover that didn't have a chance to make it up there. Well, to, well, it didn't have a chance to make it down there, actually. I forget what happened to it. I think it ran out of power or communications went crap, but it's, it's, it's still up there and it's still in one piece. Hell if I know if it still works. I don't know if I get it, should I just bring it back, bring it back down in one piece or should I just let it kind of continue its mission. I'll let you guys comment about that. Funny thing though, when I built the rocket to, uh, this new rocket to deliver a payload into orbit, I made it a little bigger than the one that put up the core of the station. And the weight of it shows. <laughs> if the spaceport had a voice, it'd be saying, <laughs> So I'm going to need to redesign the whole spaceport thing. I'm thinking instead of a platform where the rocket launches off of, I'm just going to have it settled directly on the ground somehow. I don't, I don't know. Also, because the colony is in a weird, funky area, it's a spot that we picked because it was the area with the most resources. That means when we launch things into orbit, it's the orbit is going to be slightly funky. So if we're, ever, or if we're ever going to go to other planets or even Duna's moon, we're going to have to find a way, we're going to have to find a way to get our ships into a better orbit. So I think going to other planetary bodies, celestial bodies, for now is going to be on hold. I think the next colony we should build is a colony that's prioritized in launching space vehicles. And it'll be located on the equator of Duna. So we're going to have to build vehicles to be able to go out there and start the colony. Or even transport personnel back and forth. Something that flies maybe. Propeller driven. Because obviously we can't use jet engines. And rockets would be a little bit overkill. But regardless, we'll figure it out. Then once we get that colony situated on the equator, we can start actually actually planning missions to other spots in the, in the solar system. Now I'm thinking of making the story right now, well there really is no story other than me just playing a game, but uh, I'm thinking that Duna is going to be completely alone, like no other colony ship made it. You have to realize that space is a very dangerous place. Quickly built colony ships where corners were cut for cost sake, it could be a absolute miracle that these little guys made it in their ship. Or maybe I'll just make like a real quick failed colony on Ike or something, just for fun. I don't know what we're gonna do with the place, but we'll figure it out. Now I know that some of you have been wanting to add to this experience, and that's fine. So if you have a colony ship or even a colony that you might wanna send me so I can take a look at it, just go ahead and put it on Kerbal X, I think it is. Send me the link, I'll go ahead and download it. We'll figure it out, it'll be fun. You can send me the link through my YouTube Google email that you can find on the um, channel main page under the about button or window. So I think that'd be pretty cool, especially if you make it interesting. Like if I go there and I start finding out little tidbits and secrets and stuff, like what happened, what went wrong. Mind you, I, I can't like recycle anything. I mean, I could use the Kerbal attachment or inventory or whatever the hell, can't remember off the top of my head right now. But I can use engineers to go there and take pieces off and we can reuse those and stuff like that. Especially if we have like fuel tanks and extra fuel and whatnot, we can definitely reclaim that. Just interesting stuff, you know. Be creative. Nothing weird or out there, mind you. What I mean by that is like alien technology. We'll worry about about advanced aliens far into the future. Right now it's just Kerbals that tried to escape death but didn't make it. It'd be interesting to see
see what kind of lore you guys come up with. I'm just gonna play a game and have fun. But if you want to come up with lore, hey, sounds cool. I've been getting requests to restart the Solar Nations thing, but that whole fiasco I left far behind me and I put it in capable hands to continue the series. Although I haven't seen a whole lot recently, but times are tough. Real life first, you know? Which is one of the reasons why I stopped making Solar Nations, because it just took so much time. Way more time than what I'm doing now. Even with colonizing the solar system, I don't have to worry about making stories or lines or anything like that. I can just play the game and whatever happens, happens. So that's it. That's pretty much everything right now. I've been getting requests on donning the painted Mandalorian helmet again. If you're new here and you don't know what I'm talking about, just go under my channel and look at category that's like other other games or something like that and you'll you'll see it. There's an old, an old really bad $20 rubber helmet that I used a sharpie just to paint the sides, make it look cool. <laughs> <laughs> that ship didn't last very long. Oh, we need to get the hell out of here. Ow. Rookie. Rookie, you still with us? Yes, slap me again, mommy. But recently, I think it was for Christmas, I got the real deal. Really, really, really nice Mandalorian helmet. Fits very well. I'd have to figure out how to talk through it. But I could do that again if I get enough support, of, support for it. Anyways, this has been a Kerbal Space Program video. And if you liked what you saw, please leave a like. And if you really, really liked what you saw, consider subscribing. I upload often. And every once in a blue moon, I might download, uh, blah, 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 upload a video game that is other than Kerbal Space Program. It'd be like Fallout 4 or Solar Empire. I was doing a Spore thing for a while before it decided to delete my save completely. But anywho, I also have a membership thing if you want to join. The lowest they had was 99 cents a month. They didn't have an option for free, because I probably would have just picked that. But it's a membership thing, so of course they got to throw in that little money doohickey. But if you feel deep down in your heart that you want to support the channel, it's 99 cents a month and you get all kinds of cool little badges and emojis and stuff, which I've noticed that some of them need some work, so we'll be going back there and cleaning them up and making them look a lot better. Anyways, love you all, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.